China's economy is in a downturn, the job market is tight, and consumption willingness is declining. These factors combined have created many abnormal phenomena in China's big cities. These phenomena were unheard of in the past and highlight the current difficulties faced by China's economy. Inflation has intensified the pressure on the cost of living. The prices of daily necessities such as fruits and vegetables are rising rapidly, even catching up with the price of meat. This has increased the burden on residents' lives and greatly reduced their sense of happiness. In the video, we can see that spinach costs US 98 cents a handful in supermarkets in Beijing, and bok choy costs 56 cents. The portions are very small. Let me show you the price of vegetables in an ordinary supermarket in Shanghai. Cauliflower is US 84 cents, broccoli is US 98 cents, and beans are also sold for US $1.26. Children from poor families are malnourished again. The life of ordinary people is really difficult. Fruits cost around a dollar, vegetables cost around 84 cents, and pork is even more outrageous, costing almost four dollars. What else can you buy for fourteen dollars now? A barrel of rapeseed oil, a carton of ordinary milk, two pounds of fresh meat, and two pounds of prawns? In addition, gas bills have also increased inexplicably recently, doubling in price. It's summertime now. A month's electricity bill is estimated to be more than 140 US dollars. I don't know how those people with an income of only more than 600 US dollars can survive. It's worth noting that many white-collar workers in Shanghai have begun to bring their own lunches, and consumption levels have dropped significantly. The girl in the video lives on about $70 a month in Shanghai. 500 yuan living expense for one month in Shanghai on the 9th day of August. Good morning, I didn't even eat breakfast today, I only brought lunch to work. Just make do with it. After getting off work, I bought some chili sauce ingredients. I bought onions, cilantro, garlic and peppers. In addition, I bought less than 5 pounds of eggplants and planned to make some dried eggplant. In the evening, I had steamed buns, sausages and a glass of homemade lemonade. After finishing the meal, start working on the peppers and eggplant. Total spent today was $5.44. In big cities, young people from other places work hard. Some live in small basements, while others live in simple bungalows. Their income is barely enough to survive. This is the real life of a family of four living in a $70 rental house in Beijing. In the video, we can see that the family lives in bunk beds and has no bathroom. They can only wash their faces and brush their teeth in the yard. The kitchen is also very simple. This is the basement rented by a Shanxi girl for US $350 a month. The girl described herself as having no stable income and eating instant noodles three times a day. Life was not easy. Not only is the living environment poor, but the working environment is also unsatisfactory. It's reported that because job seekers in Guangzhou and Shenzhen cannot find jobs, a large number of them have switched to jobs as DD drivers or express delivery drivers, causing competition in these industries to become extremely fierce. A blogger in Hunan also pointed out that the current market squeeze on ordinary workers has reached an extreme level. As far as she knows, the number of taxi drivers and delivery people in the country is close to 100 million. On the other hand, many locals became rich due to demolition and settled into a retirement life early. Such polarization has led more and more young people to choose to leave first-tier cities, leading to a significant increase in urban vacancy rates. In a highly competitive environment, young people have to work harder to stand out, leading to high-intensity work and irregular lifestyles becoming the norm. Subsequently, more and more young people are suffering from geriatric diseases and even emotional diseases such as depression and auditory hallucinations, which are gradually increasing. The girl in the video is a 26-year-old primary school teacher who was diagnosed with late-stage uremia. It's said that she often holds back her urine and eats irregularly. Yesterday, our department admitted a 25-year-old young man who had a sudden myocardial infraction. The doctor on duty was very busy. Fortunately, the rescue was timely and the thrombus block in the blood vessels was extracted. 
In recent years, many people in their 20s have suffered from myocardial infraction. There are more and more young people suffering from coronary heart disease and myocardial infraction. Some long-established companies in Guangdong and Shenzhen went bankrupt one after another, and the scene of workers lining up to receive compensation is heartbreaking. South media people in Guangdong mentioned that Shenzhen, once known as the world's factory, is quietly changing. People on the street no longer discuss which company is hiring, but instead care about which factory is closed. According to news from the toy industry, Mattel plans to accelerate its withdrawal from the Chinese market. This toy factory, which has been in China for nearly 40 years, is rumored to be gradually relocated and closed within a year. As a leading company in the global toy industry, Mattel Group is a U.S.-funded company that has invested in and built factories in the Pearl River Delta in the early days of China's reform and opening up. Its Foshan Nanhai Zhangmei Toy Factory, which produces Barbie dolls, is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. However, at this point in time, news came out in the industry that Mattel's Foshan factory will complete the production capacity transfer in 2024, which further triggered discussions about Mattel accelerating its evacuation from China. The collapse of manufacturing companies not only severely affects China's economy but also poses a threat to social stability. A recent report released by China Labor Bulletin (CLB), a non-governmental organization based in Hong Kong, shows that in the first half of 2024, China recorded 757 workers' rights protection and strike protests. This is higher than the 696 cases in the same period last year. Among them, the construction industry accounts for the highest proportion, reaching 47.8 percent, followed by manufacturing, accounting for 32.4 percent. The two industries recorded a combined 233 protests. This is higher than the 197 cases in the same period last year. Moreover, not only are businesses experiencing poor performance and closing down one after another, ordinary shops are also finding it difficult to maintain, and the economic environment continues to deteriorate. In order to survive, some merchants in Beijing have even offered rent-free services. As long as tenants pay their utility bills on time, they can maintain the lease. Since August in Beijing, the luxury housing market has frequently set transaction records, but this time the focus is no longer on high-priced purchases, but on falling housing prices. The current situation is that buyers are forced to sell their homes for less than the original purchase price or market expectations when reselling their properties. This often reflects a softening market or the development of a buyer's market, where sellers are forced to lower their selling prices to sell quickly. Sede Guoan Mansion, located within the Second Ring Road of Xichang, Beijing, was once highly sought after because of its prime location. In the past, the price of second-hand houses here has remained above U.S. twenty-eight thousand per square meter for a long time. Last year, without any publicity, the five hundred and fifty units launched and the second phase of the project were sold out within one day. However, when the third phase was launched at the end of May this year, despite sufficient publicity and consumer accumulation, only more than 20 of the 150 units were sold, with a sell-through rate of less than 20 percent. A second-hand house of 197.4 square meters was recently sold for a total price of 3.9 million yuan and a unit price of 19,800 yuan per square meter, which is already lower than the opening price of the new project of 155,000 yuan per square meter. Located in Haidian District, Shishan Number、no. One Courtyard was once the benchmark luxury house in the northwest area. The average price of several recently transacted properties has been close to 100,000 yuan per square meter. Among them, a 181 square meter three-bedroom apartment with parking space was sold for 18.5 million yuan. Excluding the parking space, the unit price is about 100,000 yuan per square meter. Last year, the highest transaction price of the same apartment type reached U.S. 2.7 million, with an average price of U.S. 149,000 per square meter. Some agents even revealed that the peak price was U.S. 4.2 million. This is a community in Haidian West Fourth Ring Road that just received housing last year. This brand new apartment with a flat floor has recently been reduced by U.S. 950,000, which is already lower than the market price. The living room and dining room have a 72 square meter side hall with lighting on three sides. You can enjoy the beautiful view of the Western Mountains from home. There are three parking spaces and a password room.
In addition, Wanjing Jinmao Mansion is a benchmark luxury house in the industrial core area of Chaoyang District. Last month, a 223-square-meter flat-floor three-bedroom apartment with a middle floor was sold in this project for a total price of US$3.07 million, with the unit price falling below US$14,000. In May last year, the transaction price of the same apartment type was as high as US$4.45 million, with a unit price of US$19,900 per square meter. In just over a year, the total price dropped by several million dollars. It's reported that since 2024, at least 11 cities in Shenyang, Ningde, Zhuhai, and other places have canceled the property market price limit policies. Industry insiders believe that this may lead to a sharp drop in housing prices in some areas. For example, house prices in the Wanher Optics Valley project in Wuhan dropped from approximately US 3200 to US 1700 per square meter. Housing prices in the Huanggur Poly Bay project in Guangzhou have also dropped from US 2800 per square meter to US 1900. Industry experts pointed out that the cancellation of the price limit policy may lead to a sharp decline in housing prices in some areas, thereby triggering irrational adjustments in the market. Zhang De Wei, chief analyst of Centaline Real Estate, said that under the current market environment, even if there is no price limit, it will be difficult for developers to sell houses at high prices. Even though the Beijing government has launched several policies to boost the property market, the downward trend has not been curbed. Data shows that in the first seven months of this year, the total sales of the top 100 real estate companies fell by 40.1% year-on-year. Some netizens believe that China's real estate market has accumulated overcapacity for many years and that price cuts may intensify. On social media, many people express concerns about further declines in housing prices and warn to avoid buying off-plan properties that may have a risk of becoming unfinished properties or rotten-tailed. Price cuts in the property market are likely to intensify. A Taiwanese scholar analyzed that China's economy seems to be approaching the bottom, but it remains to be seen when it will rebound. He pointed out that insufficient domestic demand, local government debt problems, the downturn in the real estate market, and the instability of household financial structures are all key factors hindering economic recovery. Liu Mengjuan emphasized that the employment issues and local government debt are the core of the current economic recovery, and local governments have been unable to stimulate investment through infrastructure construction due to excessive debt burdens. It's reported that China's local government debt problem is becoming increasingly serious. In the first seven months of 2024, local government bonds issued a total of approximately US 590 billion, bringing local government debt to nearly US 14 trillion. The issuance of local government bonds is expected to reach its peak in the next few months. Experts pointed out that the debt pressure on local governments has reached its limit, and even the funds to pay interests are scarce currently. Li Hongqing, an economist at the American Institute for Information and Strategic Studies, believes that it's still difficult for local governments to alleviate the debt crisis by borrowing new ones to repay the old ones through refinancing bonds. The total debt is too large, with interest alone reaching trillions of yuan. Local governments are no longer able to repay the principal and can only continue to issue bonds to cope. The only option is to continue to issue bonds to deal with it. Chinese official data shows that as of the end of June 2024, the national local government debt balance was US$5.96 trillion. However, the actual scale of debt may be even larger. Goldman Sachs Group estimates that the total scale of implicit debt, including local government financing platforms, has reached over $13 trillion US dollars. Faced with such huge debts, local governments not only have no incentive to repay loans, but also have financial difficulties in some places leading to salary reductions and other phenomena. Although the newly issued bonds were mainly used for infrastructure construction, their benefits did not meet expectations, and some special bond funds were idle or used irregularly. Li Hongqing said that local governments continue to pass on debt problems to state-owned enterprises and banks, forming a vicious circle. Large state-owned enterprises and banks are forced to hold these bonds, which could eventually lead to a debt crisis. Goldman Sachs Group also downgraded the stock ratings of China's major state-owned banks as a result. Some analysts believe that tight control of the external environment, high tech bans, and capital flight have left China's manufacturing, exports, and domestic demand in a sluggish state, making it difficult for the economic situation to improve. According to our observations, the CCP's political methods are not suitable for economic development. 
China's current economic system, dominated by public ownership, has limited support for private enterprises, resulting in a large amount of capital flight. With severe losses in the real estate market and increasing internal and external economic pressures, Xi Jinping's policies are facing increasing challenges.